Okay, applications of Ampere's law, part two. Okay, I want to just finish off this problem then. What, what about the B outside of this? This is a wire, the current is coming out at us. Um, this is just a cross section of the wire. The wire is coming up and, in, and it's also going into the um, page. Or, and um, this is, we call this capital R. And um, what, it, what happens if the B is, we want to know it out here. Maybe a distance R, lowercase r away again. Okay, we draw a Gaussian, or it's not a Gaussian, an Empyrean loop here. Circular. Remember that the current density in there is J. So the current density in there is J. And so that's supposed to be a circle with, it, with, its, with its center here. And um, so I'm going to write down Ampere's law. Mu naught I is equal to the closed loop integral of B dot DL. Okay, so um, the B is going to be the dots are coming out at us, and so the Bs are going this way. Draw a few of Bs. If you want to know the direction of B, it's always if you draw your radius out there. The B should be perpendicular to that, because this is really a tangent line. That's a tangent vector, so that's B. And here's some here's some DLs. I'll show you some DLs too. The DLs aren't curved. They're actually they're actually just little segments that are infinitesimally small. Okay, so how much current is going through this Ampyrean loop? Well, it, none none is going here, is it? It's it's all on the inside here. So the current that's going through the Ampyrean loop, it's, it's only going to be mu naught times, now um, since j is equal to i over a, it's going to be um, j times a, but I only want this area. So that's going to be pi times big R squared times j. So it's j times the area. That gives you the i. This is the i. And then that's equal to the closed loop integral of b dot dl. Now we'll get rid of the dot product because B and DL are always in the same direction. So this, this is the argument. B and DL are in the same direction at all points on the Empyrean loop. And then um, I can pull the B out of the integral because why would B be stronger here than here than here because of the symmetry. So mu naught <coughs> times j times pi r squared is equal to b times the closed loop integral of dl. This is just saying, this is just now saying add up all the dls. And I can do that because b is uniform at all points on the Ampyrean loop. And then um, when I do add up all the DLs, I'm just going to get two pi times little r, because that's that's the Empyrean loop. So I can get rid of a pi, but I can't 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 cancel out those r's anymore. And so it looks like b is equal to mu naught j r squared, which is just a constant, r squared is just a constant, um, <clears throat> divided by 2r. And so um, if I'm going to go and finish this graph, it looks like it's going to be equal to, since this is, um, all this other stuff is just constants, it looks like it's a 1 over r graph which behaves like, like that. It, it swooshes down, you know, something like that. Okay, so that's for outside of a thick wire. Okay, now um, I'd like to <clears throat> talk for a moment about a coaxial cable. Coaxial cable is a cable where you have, uh, this is a coaxial cable, 
and I wish I could zoom in. The, the, the camera I'm using isn't very good at zooming in, but there's a, there's a wire right here at the center. You've used coaxial cables before. There's a wire at the center, and coax, it, it, along that same axis as the wire is this other <coughs> outer wire that's a cylindrical ho hollow cylinder. Now they don't just put air there, they put some, some type of a, an insulating material so that it's easy, you can bend it around, you don't have to worry about the two, the, the wire, the center wire and the, and the cylindrical wire touching one another. So I can bend this all I want and they're never going to touch one another. Okay, now I want to show you then what, what happens in the physics of a coaxial cable. With a coaxial cable you might have something that looks like this. You have a wire going like that and then um, on the same axis of that we're going to make this long. So I'm drawing um, <laughs> this all has the same radius. So that's a radius capital R we'll say. And then this is a wire that's going through the center. So this is metal, and that's a, wire, a metal wire, piece of wire. And um, so I just want to show you something that, um, and let's say that the that whatever material's in here, let's say that it's that that mu for that material is equal to mu naught. And let's also say that the current going this way, I is equal to the currents com coming down, the current coming down the sides of this. So we'll say current coming down the sides is also I. Okay? So if there's one amp going up this way, there's there's one amp coming down. And that's usually the case because this is like going into some appliance. And, and you can think of the appliance as being a junction. In, um, and the junction rule says that the current going into a junction is equal to the current coming out of a junction. So, um, you know, whatever, whatever it's going into, we should expect the same current going in as coming out, or, or you're charging that, that whatever that appliance is, you're, you know, it's gaining charge. Okay, so um, I'm going to first find the field in here. The field in here, just draw an Amperian loop, doing this in three dimensions at this point. And so that's just going to be, you know, when you do all this, it's going to be going real fast. It's mu naught i through the Amperian loop times the closed loop integral of b dot dl. And so it's just the one i that's in there. So it's mu naught times i is equal to, now um, you can get rid of, since the b's are circulating this way, but so are the dl's. So you can get rid of the dot product. And then you can pull the B out because it should be the same at every point in here. Remember, the only I that matters is the I through the Empyrean membrane. So none of this outer I is, is, is going through there. And so you have mu naught I is equal to, um, when you pull the B out, you can add all the DLs up and you get, you're going to get B 2 pi R. Okay, so the I, or the B rather, is going to be equal to mu naught I over 2 pi R. Okay, but that's not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is that when I put the the field, when I want to know the field out here, and I put my Amperian loop out here, like so, that Amperian loop, if you think about it, it has no current, no net current through it. We'll call it the, pot, the current going one way is positive, the current coming down the other way is negative. And so I'm going to have mu naught, for out here, mu naught times zero is equal to the, the closed loop integral of b dot dl. <clears throat> and so the point is, is that the b out here is going to be zero. And so um, what that means is that when you use a coaxial cable, you don't have to worry about, even though you have all this current running through here, you don't have to worry about it making magnetic fields outside of it. The magnetic field outside of a, a coaxial cable a lot of times is zero.